All right, so I've beat Tears of the Kingdom and I've given myself a few weeks to process my thoughts and uh, I still find myself at a loss for words. Now, let me be upfront real quick. This is not a review. This is more of me just compiling my thoughts about the game after I've beaten it for the first time and just, just my overall thoughts about the experience. I'm probably going to do a full review at some point, but that is nowhere in sight. And I just need to talk about the game a little bit. But those of you who are wondering, is the game good? Yeah, it's one of the best games ever made and it's probably my new favorite game of all time. But if I'm being 100% honest, I'm treating Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom like how I treat the Mario Galaxy games. As one experience and two games. Both masterpieces where I can't just simply choose one over the other. If you just wanted to hear if I thought the game was good, then there you go. I love it. But I just want to talk about a few things that are probably more spoiler territory. So if you haven't beaten the game, do that, then come back. Because this game is best experienced as blind as possible. So this is your only warning. Is Tears of the Kingdom a perfect game? No. But there's no such thing as a perfect game. And there never will be. Everything has flaws. But I truly believe that this is one of, if not the best game ever made. It takes so many ideas from Breath of the Wild that worked and doubles down on it. Whereas the stuff that didn't work, they've fixed. For example, those terrible motion control based puzzles in the shrines are gone, completely stripped away. In fact, the shrines here are much more interesting as far as the puzzles are concerned. I also love how the developers noticed that people really like the combat challenges akin to Eventide Island and the Trial of the Sword and replaced the Test of Strength shrines with those kinds of challenges. Overall, there's so much variety in the gameplay, locations, and combat. They've also really boosted the enemy variety. It's nothing like Elden Ring's enemy variety, but Elden Ring's main draw is its combat. There isn't really any other way to interact with the world in Elden Ring outside of the combat. Tears of the Kingdom's world focuses more on the overall interactability and feels so alive and different even though it reuses the same world from Breath of the Wild. Because other than the general geography of the world, it's completely unrecognizable. And that's just the surface, we're not even talking about the Sky Islands and the depths. First, I want to talk about the Sky Islands. Funnily enough, for being put all over the marketing for this game, they were actually less Sky Islands than I was expecting. Not to say I'm disappointed, because I'm not. The Sky Islands function beautifully as overworld style puzzles, whereas instead of going into a shrine, the puzzle was just in the world. They feel really natural, and I'm a big fan of these kinds of puzzles. Plus, the gold, heavenly atmosphere of the sky is a great contrast to the surface and the depths. It really mixes up the gameplay. The depths gotta be the biggest part of the game that the development team was trying to keep secret. I remember hoping for darker and more cave-like areas for this game, but noticed that they weren't getting much attention in the promotional material. So I tried to not get my hopes up. It was one of the best surprises ever when I found out about both the caves and the depths. Caves are pretty simple changes to the surface that add even more variety to the world and make re-exploring places so interesting. And some of these caves go on for a while. I was shocked with how deep these things go sometimes. But it's nothing compared to the depths, which essentially function as a dark world similar to A Link to the Past. A reverse world that is the same size as Hyrule is insane, functionally doubling the size of the original game's map. And not only do the depths add more visual variety, but exploring the depths is different than exploring, say, the sky or the surface. In those areas, it is all about seeing something and checking it out. Here, you can't see anything. It's pitch black and can honestly be kind of terrifying. You never know what you're going to find and you explore by slowly lighting the underground and finding materials you can't find on the surface. My one complaint about the depths is that I wish it was slightly easier to leave without having to resort to a fast travel. I originally started playing Tears of the Kingdom without fast travel at all, but it made traveling between the three layers of the map much more difficult than I was expecting. But what did I think about the game's presentation? It's fantastic. I expected nothing less. But what I wasn't expecting was the feelings I got from playing the game. I expected it to feel like the first time I played Breath of the Wild, and it wasn't that. It was something different, not worse, not better, just different. That I wasn't expecting. I've grown incredibly attached to this world, the characters, and everything. I mean, go figure, Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games of all time. Tears of the Kingdom is not the same game, not by a long shot. Playing it felt like coming home, but seeing it broken and torn apart. I felt so much joy seeing this world in a different way, growing, rebuilding, and changing after all these years, but there was a sense of uneasiness and mystery that I couldn't shake while playing the main story. 
This kingdom is just getting back on its feet, and finally things seem to be getting better. But suddenly, disaster strikes. Something worse is coming, and the leader of this world is now missing, throwing everyone into panic. It was definitely not what I was expecting. There's this mysterious sadness throughout the entirety of the main plot, and it's really effective. Secrets being unearthed as you explore old ruins and murals that were in Breath of the Wild, but didn't mean much then. The story itself is pretty straightforward and isn't anything crazy, but it's how it's executed that I think is done incredibly well, for the most part. Some gripes I have are the repeating stories of the imprisoning war from each ancient sage. They're super repetitive, and outside of Minoru, no new information is really given. I get it, the imprisoning war happened, but I need more details than just the bare minimum. The Dragon Tear memories are really cool, but I think the story is too connected and linear for the player to be able to get them at random points. I think the way of getting them is a nice changeup compared to the photos from Breath of the Wild, but those memories were mostly self-contained. The Dragon Tears, I think, would have benefited from a more linear way of getting them. Also, another minor gripe I have is regarding some of the world building. I'm kind of conflicted about this, and it's honestly kind of confusing. Some would argue that Nintendo doesn't really care about it, and we should just not worry about it that much either, and just kind of move on. And I think that's a possibility, especially with things like the Sheikah technology and Guardians. But I was really hoping for some kind of explanation for where they went. I mean like the shrines and towers, sure, maybe they just went back underground. But I don't know, what about the giant divine beasts? I mean for crying out loud, the Shrine of Resurrection's walls have been stripped of all Sheikah technology. I don't know, I just really would have appreciated some kind of bullshit reason for why all the Sheikah technology disappeared. Because it makes it look like they don't care, but then there's specific details placed in specific places that makes it clear that they were paying attention. Also, why do some of the characters from Breath of the Wild not remember Link? Admittedly, this isn't that big of a deal. Some characters may just see Link as some generic traveler and that's why they don't remember him. But Hestu? That shit giving broccoli man? Who, like... No one else can even see him, how does he not remember me? But all these tiny nitpicks aside, I really adore this game. I made this quite clear at the beginning, but it's basically my favorite game of all time now. I care a lot about this series, this era of Zelda, these characters. I'm probably going to be playing this game for a very long time. It's incredibly special, and even though it's not what I expected it to be, it's still a masterpiece. There's so much I haven't talked about, the dungeons, the story details, the boss fights, the game mechanics, and abilities. Oh, and not to mention the music, are you kidding me? It's incredible! There's so much I want to talk about still, but I think that would be more appropriate in a full review and I think it's going to be a while before I do that. I need more time with the game. It's something so special and it deserves a proper in-depth review that would really do it justice. I just don't think I've played it enough to do that. I also think I just need some more time to think and settle on it. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is the game of a generation, and it really gives me hope for the gaming industry that there is still so much yet to be seen, and it proves that games can be so much more than just a piece of software. Video games are art, and when it comes to their potential as a medium, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom proves that the sky's the limit.